it goes beyond that. It, it's the, you know, the presence of an illness or a dramatic change in the perceived wellness condition of an individual um, is an identity challenge for anyone that knows them. Right. Or comes into contact with them. See, to so make that explicit with, statement and, and then have a way to mediate that, that would be wonderful to hear. Say that one more time. To, to, to make that as an explicit statement, because that, that, that's, a, that's not only a, a, a cognitive aha, uh -huh. to have lived it as you have and others have, and, and you know, understand how that morphs over time, and um, being able in the Medicare system to, to look at those echoes and not treat them as just un, un impactful artifacts, but actually actually be, be a way to, to deal with those in a positive, proactive way. We've gotten right here in this conversation to something really remarkable and critical about this. And that is the thing that you said earlier about the resistance to going into the new from the familiar that does produce positive outcomes is actually the often, I think, the entrenched condition of any caregiver that's working professionally in the space. Whether they're the underpaid caregiver at a poor facility, earning minimum wage, going from one room to the next, where each room is going to be that repeated challenge for their identity, or if there's somebody who's just a CNA or something and has just been this is my career and I just do this, coming into a new home for a week or a month or a year, every time they get there, they're coming in with that same human experience of, look, I just fucking spent the rest of my life figuring out who I was. Don't ask me to change just because I got here, just because I fell down and broke my arm or my neck or got old or whatever. But that's actually the reality is that, that in every one of those instances, the, 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 the vital movement is to an identity shift of some kind, however discreet, and the entrenched and difficult move is to the change of the old. There is something here that, that you're touching on that, that really is perennial. Um, you're seeing it in teachers. Uh, you know, I, I learn mathematics so I can impart didactically this discipline, and I'm not really a social worker to deal with all this childhood trauma coming up in a, in a lot of noise, and I can't deal with 30 kids in the room. You know, I'll I'll do the curriculum, but and doctors and and. And so the idea of getting to the ability to, we've used this term, you know, uh, orchestrate across a continuum of stages, not maybe the whole thing, but, but, and to be comfortable at dealing with the particular individual at the time with your own individuality, the co-individuality integrations that happen and a couple of times this conversation drops me back to Martin Buber, the I thou and um, you know not treating people as objects but treating them in, in a spiritual way um, but there is a spiritual quality to what your article or your your short paper on on the medicare had that maybe we can't be that explicit about it in a grant because it's not that secularized but there is a spiritual dimension of shift among people and among systems of people that is kind of required for this to integrate in some kind of harmonic way. 
I don't know what it is. I mean, maybe when you get to writing the curriculum, um, it'll appear. But it seems to me there are several curriculums, several coachings, uh, a complex envisioning, and the action result of that for the grantor is maybe um, whether it's elder care or home care or other care environments where there is this complex support needed, that these can be really exciting human ecologies instead of, um, you know, the, the projections we have of them being quite the negative. we go to die, yeah. Or, or, or go to, you know, be quarantined or jailed or, or I mean, it was, it was hidden away is kind of, you know, 